What's good? I'm Xavier from DX to Trainer. Today's going to be a leg day video. So really quickly, I'm going to talk about this uh, particular workout. Then I'm going to give you guys two quotes. And then I'm going to talk about the theme of today's video, which is to improve your life and escape mediocrity. So it's going to be five steps to living a better life. So first and foremost with this workout, um, I've changed my back routine and my back days before my leg day. So with my back day, I've been doing more things to target the upper back and mid back as a way it means to increase my deadlift. So, and also just to make my shoulders more stable on the bench press, just pretty much I changed my workout to bulletproof my mid and upper back for other exercises so I can increase my strength on them. I've also been doing a lot of mobility work and uh, self fascia release on my back as well. So it was too um, tender to barbell squat so i did mostly machine work now in terms of the two quotes they're both going to come from eric thomas the first one is the only way to get out of mediocrity is to keep shooting for the stars the second one is sleep is the new broke if you only have 24 hours in a day your success is dependent on how you spend the 24. now with that being said the main reason i wanted to make this video is because a lot of people waste their days away now with me personally i only like to talk to people who are accomplishing things if you order some of the five people you hang around, it makes no sense to hang around people who are not accomplishing anything. So with that being said, when I listen to people, or I talk to people, people are inherently self-centered. I only want to hear things of positivity coming from them uh, and productivity. So if they're not telling me about how they're improving and how they're moving forward, then I don't listen to them. Now, if they're telling me things that they're doing, that's advancing them then i'll listen because you are the some of the five people that you're hanging around if you hang around five losers or if you hang around five people that you're envious of that's what you're going to become so in my opinion if you're hanging around five people who are being productive and accomplishing what they want to accomplish in life then you're going to be the sixth person to accomplish that now with that being said we're going to talk about five ways that you can escape mediocrity and improve your life over the next 30 days so the first thing i want to talk to you guys about is first and foremost success and being happy to see others successful so with that being said the example i gave prior to this uh first rule for escaping mediocrity when i talk to other people i'm not like oh man this person's doing this i'm so jealous or you know, this person got a new car or this person has this going for them. I like to talk to people who are accomplishing things and I like to be happy for those people and those accomplishments. Now, outside of that, I like to help people and put people in good positions. So for me, if I know there are certain resources or tools that you can use that's going to help you in your endeavors or your goals, I'm not a hater. I'm going to give you up that information. Same as if it was, it could be a job. It could be doing business with certain people. Even if I don't particularly rock with those people, I will send you over that way. I'll just tell you what to look out for. Now, also outside of that, you also have to be willing to give when it's time to give. A lot of people don't give. A lot of people are constantly trying to figure out how to take as much as they can without reciprocating. And sometimes people, when they do reciprocate, they reciprocate poorly and they give things that don't matter so the way i look at it is like this there's been times i went to goodwill with new clothes and have given it to goodwill it's been times where um i've seen homeless people and given them twenty dollars five dollars large lump sums of money just because i know most of them are sitting outside not collecting any money and if they had ten dollars or enough money to get food or get whatever it is they're trying to get they would go home for the day because they would feel satisfied. And the way I look at it is like, one, I did lift for a decent amount of time. I did a number of different gig economy jobs and ride share jobs. If I got changed, especially like um, in Atlanta, I feel like the homeless population was kind of wild. So like, let's say if I got a tip, if it's like three or four dollars, honestly, what am I going to do with that three or four dollars? If it's five dollars, what am I going to do with that five dollars? One time I gave a religious man a ride um and i was taking him from his house to like some kind of race car event and the ride he gave me 300 dollars. so i took that money and as i drove around for the day it's three chris hundred dollar bills and somebody gave me a sob story here's some money and i say that not to brag or to like 
I'm trying to make myself sound like I'm a righteous person, but when I told somebody else that story, they said, oh, man, that's dumb. But it was like for that entire week, I made more money during that, during Lyft, and I drove for a way less amount of time than I normally would have to drive to make that money. I also picked up a bunch of training clients in a shorter amount of time, and I usually feel like in a month, I'm only picking up like two or three here or there. But it was a month where I picked up like 15 clients, and I felt like because... I put good out, I got good back. And a lot of times people are selfish and they're trying to hoard and hold on to as much as they can. And that's going to be something that's limiting for most people. Now, the second thing I want you guys to consider is criticism. So even if somebody's being a hater, nine times out of ten, it might be a nugget of truth in that criticism. And when you listen to what they have to say, take it with a grain of salt, ask other people's opinion. And to get a more truthful answer from people, I always say, Remove yourself from the situation. Remove the other person from the situation, especially if the person that you're asking knows both parties. So you might say, hey, what do you think of if a person did X, Y, and Z? And then somebody said uh, whatever and see what they would say to their response. So that way they're not pandering to you and they're not taking up for you and they're not defending the other person, they're gonna give you their unbiased opinion. And you'd rather be in that position where you're gonna get the honest truth versus thinking that you're always right. Because friends and family always wanna see you right. People who are problematic will tell you that you're right and then go to the other person that they're right. So with criticism, listen to it, take it with a grain of salt. Also encourage criticism and feedback from family or loved ones and People who, if they say something hurtful, it's not that they are trying to hurt your feelings. It's that they are trying to give you the unbiased truth so that you can improve. Now, outside of that, effort. A lot of people do not put in effort. A lot of people cap and fake as if they're putting in effort. And that's the reason why the sleep is the new broke quote went with this video. Because a lot of times people will say, oh, man, I work all day. And I spend time with my kids, so I don't have time to work out. And then if I was to follow them around, I would see they go to work and they're not really working. When they at work, they at the water cooler, cooling, talking to their friends. Or they be in the break room or they just literally spend their day trying to figure out how to do as little work as possible. And if I were to follow them home after work, I would see that, hey, you don't spend time with your kids. Your kids are in the house watching TV or on the iPad and you're in a different room watching TV or on your iPad. So a lot of times people are not putting in the effort that they say they are putting in. You want to make sure that you have a plan and that you are effectively accomplishing something each day to reach your goal. Now, the fourth thing I want to talk about is it's going to be like your roadblock. So a lot of times things that stand in your way aren't there to stop you. It's a challenge for you to defeat or a problem for you to solve. And once you solve those problems, you'll be a lot better in life. One of my favorite Jim quote or uh, Jim Brown quotes is don't wish it was easier, wish it was better because you always want to be in a position where you have the skills to solve the problem versus being in a position where when problems pop up, you're unable to manage them. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and it's similar to obstacles, but it's challenges. But in this particular instance, you want to challenge yourself. So Tony Robbins has a quote where he says, if you don't challenge yourself, God will challenge you. So you got to pick your poison in this particular instance. Do you want to be the one who are who is creating the challenge? And then, you know, at least if things fail, it's on you. Or if things succeed, it's on you. Or do you want God, the universe, karma, whatever you believe in to create the challenge? Because when you create the challenge, you somewhat have control over it. And you can overcome any obstacles that may present itself. But when something else is creating that challenge, you don't have that uh, creative control. So these are five things I want you guys to consider in terms of avoiding mediocrity. If you guys want to make any videos, uh, just let me know. I'm Xavier from GS Trainer, and I'm out.